Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jake. I'm a third year medical student and today I'm answering you. So last week on my Instagram, I posted a Q&A poll asking all of your questions that you have about the USMLE. Everything from study schedules, strategies, resources. And so today I'm gonna to be going through one by one and answering all of you. So starting with Tyler, he said, what is the best recommended approach for studying resources for the USMLE exams? So really you can break down resources into content and test taking or question bank. First and foremost, I'll just start off with the question bank. You world, many of you know, many of you have heard of, I think is probably the best question bank out there um, that is best representative for the types of questions, the difficulty of questions, um, and the way the vignettes are oriented. As well, the interface is exactly the same as the test day interface in terms of the tab, the lab values, the cross through features, etc. And so it's just good practice to train um, your ability to get through the questions and get through the uh, blocks. I also like how you can do tutor and time mode on New World and that you can kind of set 40 question blocks to simulate that of test day. In terms of content, there is so much you can choose from and there is no one correct answer. Every learner is different, every learning style is different. Obviously someone who has more of a visual style of learning might prefer my resources, might prefer the sketchies, the pixarizes. Someone who likes Anki might prefer Onking and trying to go that route. Someone who likes just brute content review might you know, stick with the first aid and Pathoma and the traditional resources. And so I'll definitely say that there's no one size fits all. Pick a resource that fits and works for you. I might be a little biased, but um, the guides that I have put together, I think function as a great content and high yield rapid review. Um, not only do they integrate all the systems, um, whereas something like first aid doesn't, but it's also caters of course to the visual learner. If you love mnemonics and memory tricks and visual diagrams to illustrate topics, definitely check out my guides. Uh, they'll be right for you. Now my next question is from Cushy and she says, what are your views about the On King deck for US Emily? Now the On King deck is popular and it is very good. Now there's a couple of things I will say about it though. There are so many cards and it contains every detail of my new show, which I think can get overwhelming and you can get bogged down by. For instance, for step one is a good example, it's pass fail now. And so there's tons of minutia, both in first aid and the Onking decks that I think are very unnecessary to spend your time on. And I think there's a lot more efficient high yield content um, that you can focus on. And so that's my only caveat with the Onking decks, but they are great. Um, they're, they're organized, they're up to date. They even have tags to UWorld questions. So if you have a UWorld block, at the end of it, you can get these tags and you can copy and paste that right into your Anki interface and you can do those questions. So I really like that aspect, but again, it has way too many details and minutia. Um, a lot of cards to get through. I think the step one, step two is like th over 30,000 cards. Um, and so that's a little bit of a caveat there. I also personally learn better through what we call pattern recognition in illness vignette scripts. Um, instead of memorizing just a random factoid and how that kind of ties into the greater picture of the, of the piece you're trying to learn, I prefer to learn through these pattern recognitions and these illness scripts. And so guys, stay tuned. Um, Hi Guru and I have been working tirelessly on these really cool GPT prompts for you guys. And one of them is gonna be this illness vignette script where it's gonna compute a really concise demographics, tempo of disease, high yield symptoms, high yield um, management and uh, physical exam findings. So stay tuned for that. So next we have It's or Marga and he's saying, are your summaries enough to study for step one? Now, I truly believe that in combination with the yield question bank, in combination with kind of the free access you have to the web and ChatGPT, alongside my resources, completely yes. Now, my resources are more designed as a kind of high yield overview of the topics. I've really condensed and packaged all the need to know information for the step one exam now that it's changed to pass fail. And so certainly it integrates, as you can see here, even the relevant images, histology, path pot that you'll see. And of course it's in a condensed visual creative manner um, so that you can get really the most out of it and retain the most in the little amount of time possible. So certainly my guides will be really, really helpful as you go through your U world and dedicated blocks, as well as in your kind of final couple months of prep when you need a high yield overview of the topics um, and a concise version. Instead of going through hundreds and hundreds of pages, you can go to these beautiful curated uh, guides that have it all here for you. So next we have Tala saying, what is your study schedule? And Alsu, who's asking how many yield questions a day? Now, I think these both fit in together. That's why I combined them here. Um, and really for a study schedule, it depends on your school, your curriculum, and how much you put into your M1 and M2 years, your didactic years. I've said this before, but, but really your USMLE journey should start from M1. Creating the right study habits, um, learning the content as you progress through the systems will certainly set you up for more success 
um, when you're approaching your test date and kind of dedicating more of that time to just step one. So I'll focus this response a little bit more on the dedicated period. Um, so during this time, um, I would definitely do 40 yield questions a day. Um, you can randomize them, of course, based on system. Um, and I would start up with 40 questions a day, kind of to simulate what one block would feel like. So start with that from when you're, let's say, six weeks out. Every week, I would add 10 questions to that uh, workload. So I do 50 questions the next week, 60 questions, 70, 80, and I'd work up to two blocks like that. Um, really questions are gonna be the best way for you to test yourself and see how ready you are approaching test day. Um, and so definitely ramping up those questions, building the stamina will be key. Now the USMLE also posts the free 120, which is right from the USMLE writers themselves. And so these are probably the most representative questions you'll see. And so I saved those questions for about the final two weeks, as this gave me the best gauge as to whether I was ready for test day. So save the free 120 to the end. Make sure to do those under real test day simulations. That'll be your best benchmark heading into test day whether you're prepared or not. Also, UWorld has two self-assessments, which are pretty good as well. Um, if you do have time, I would recommend getting to those um, at some point in your dedicated period. All right, so next we have Jonathan who's saying, how many hours do you study each day for preparation? And this kind of ties into the study schedule, which is why I put this one next. In your dedicated period, let's say it's six weeks, you really have to treat that like a full-time commitment. And so I would say from about nine to 5 p.m. every day should be about the hours you're spending studying for this exam. Um, in your last two weeks, I'd say ramping up even a little bit more and doing some nightly Anki or nightly reviews. And then give yourself about one to two days before test day just to relax, to decompress, and make sure that your brain is ready, is rested for test day. So definitely don't cram, don't go crazy in your last couple days. So just make sure you're calm, cool, and collected uh, in those final days so that you're ready for test day. Next we have Midfavor Mar who's saying, midway burnout, any tips? And I'm glad someone mentioned this because it is so real um, that studying for this exam is exhausting. It is mentally taxing. Um, it demands so much out of you. It's a sacrifice. Um, and so, so certainly guys, you need to make sure your mental health is in check, your physical health is in check to make sure that you are just staying on track um, and doing okay. And this means guys, having a healthy routine, building in healthy habits, and that's everything from regular exercise, a good diet, getting good sleep and having good sleep hygiene and making sure that when you do have a little break here and there, you're spending it with the people you love, doing the things you love. Um, because again, guys, becoming a doctor, studying for these exams is really a marathon. It's not a sprint. Make sure you're finding sustainable routine that works for you. Um, because really guys, these exams can be um, a toll on you. And um, it's, it's important that you have these habits um, to kind of combat that and make sure that you're feeling strong and, and able to get through it. And lastly, we have Messi11 who said, topics on which we should focus one month before step. And I'm also so glad someone asked this because one month before step, I think is the most important month that you'll have in your prep. Now there's a few key things that I think you should really focus on in this last month. And by this stage, you should feel pretty comfortable with the content across all systems. Um, but it's really about refining the kind of factoids, the minutia uh, details that are a little bit more memory based. Um, including your kind of dermatology, MSK stuff, including stats and ethics. So those types of things I definitely save to this point and ramp that up uh, as you get closer to test day. And so specifically the resources I would recommend are actually my beautiful new guide here, the principles of pathology and immunology. You guys have probably heard all over Reddit, all over the internet that Pathoma chapters one to three, immunology on the USMLE is so high yield. It's no wonder because if you go to the website, Pathology and immunology and the foundations of these principles will honestly tie into all systems that you're gonna have questions on. And so I think it makes up almost up to a third of the questions on test day. And so what I've done here, guys, is I've combined Pathoma and First Aid into an ultimate rapid review guide that incorporates those elements as well as all my visuals, all my memory tricks, etc. So if I show you guys just a little preview here, of course, it's like topics like apoptosis and necrosis. Instead of just raw text, raw pot images, I've incorporated really fun illustrations to memorize the topics with my mnemonics, of course, and made it just a really great guide to review in your final stages. So this one here, I'd highly recommend going over, honestly, three to five times in your final stages of prep. I got so many questions from the foundations of pathology and immunology, everything from just knowing the basic factoids of your interleukins, 
like interleukin-8 is a neutrochemotactic agent, etc. And so just factoids like that are high yield to review in your final stages. The other resources I had was Randy Neal's Biostats YouTube series. Guys, honestly, this is probably enough for the Biostats aspect and just go over this sometime in your final month of prep and you'll get those questions down. Also, MSK and Derm, very factoid heavy in my opinion, you know, dermatomes, nerve root lesions, all that kind of stuff. And so I'd also kind of recommend going over all those things at the final stages of your prep. And again, in my MSK Derm Guide, I've packaged it all together for you in this really concise way where it integrates all the systems. It has all the images you're gonna see, all my creative mnemonics, of course, um, and just makes it really simple as a rapid review to go over in your final stages of prep. So certainly I'd recommend this MSK Derm Guide as well as my Path and Immuno Guide in that final stages in particular. Now there's also a really cool doc online, a free doc from Melman, and it's an Arrows, High Yield Arrows PDF. It's a really cool doc to go over as well in particular for your arrow questions across endo, repro, um, and renal, right? When you're talking about calcium, vitamin D, uh, parathyroid hormone, all that kind of stuff, which goes up, which goes down, those are really good. And the last thing that I'd recommend that I came across was this Google Drive with these high yield image docs. And it has just a bunch of path images, a bunch of histo images um, that are likely to come up on test day. So all of this will be linked in the description below for you guys. Um, but that's kind of my two cents on the final month of prep and what you should focus on. And that is it, everyone. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was really fun answering a bunch of your questions. I hope this helped. I hope you have a better idea now, um, some strategies, some study schedules, some resources uh, that you can go to uh, for your USMLE prep. If you guys have any other questions, uh, leave them down below. All of my resources will also be linked in the description if you're interested. Thank you all for your support. Um, I, I truly, really appreciate you all. And as always, study smarter, not harder. We'll see you next time.